But uh, yes, you're my friend, but don't choose friends for me. Mm. Do you believe really we are choosing right friends? Do you really believe even in uh, the, the neighborhood mm. we are doing the right thing? No, f- first of all, you see, like uh, my, my last comment on the constitution and the question of competence and, uh, and, and the criteria for leadership. Uh, as I told you, the BOMAS process had properly diagnosed all our problems mm-hmm. and provided the solution. Yes. So uh, if you look at uh, Article 73, the way it had been crafted, the entire uh, chapter on leadership and integrity, the way Kenyans wanted mm-hmm. to uh, to be crafted was such that you would weed out people who are incompetent, people who lack integrity, and people who are not suitable for office from ever running for office. But then... Uh, and that that requirement for integrity, uh, competence, and suitability was to be applied on leadership at both levels of appointed leadership and elective pol- uh, uh, leadership. When they went to meddle with the constitution, they separated uh, appointive uh, office and elective office so that the, the guiding principles of leadership and integrity under Article 73, if you read it in, current, in its current state, only requires competence, integrity, and suitability when it comes to appointive uh, slots, but not on elections. Mm -hmm. In this country, you cannot even have a discussion on introducing minimum educational competence on elected leaders. You have heard that uh, uh, the pushback that has been there when there have been attempts to introduce at least a basic minimum, even just a Form 4 certificate for members of the county assembly. They say no. They say, oh, leadership is from God. Then you have this God chosen <laughs> president. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, and you know, at the end of the day, yes. yeah, there is a way to measure competence. It is scientific. scientific if you cannot yes. do this job, don't apply for the job. Yes. So that is part of the problem we have. Number two, the way the world works now, we have moved from... Uh, the times when you could actually run, run your own affairs, you say, this is Kenya, it is hidden, an enclave hidden somewhere here, we can do our own things now. Uh, the, of, of course, the COVID pandemic was the best example of mm. ha- just how interconnected the world is. Mm. It is impossible for you to uh, run an economy anywhere in this world without external influences. Mm. But the way that you interact with those external influences, because nobody is here to help you to succeed they are also pursuing their own uh, personal interests. And the global powers will look at the political uh, landscape and decide that uh, the way this Sifuna is talking, I don't think he, he is going to, yes. uh, if we allow him to go into power, Undermine he's it. going to finish us. He's mm. going to look this side or going to look that side. Mm. So it is a big uh, uh, problem. And we as uh, the opposition spoke very strongly about external interference in our elections. You have uh, global powers always trying to extend uh, their influences beyond certain borders. They say, oh, this and this and this, and to impose their own ways of thinking and their ideals and values on societies that are uh, basically uh, not ready for some of those uh, conversations or at least uh, have more pressing uh, needs. Yeah? And societies evolve and take time. So it is not possible for you to just come and dump everything at once. I remember the newest uh, country, uh, Southern Sudan, when they became independent. And, you know, they were starting from zero. These were people who were fighting the bush. They have mm-hmm. nothing. There's mm-hmm. no road, no tarmac, no company that produces anything no banks, and everybody was rushing. You get somebody who has just come from the bush and you give them an iPhone 10. you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, even for me, we had to progress. Yes. Uh, slowly. slowly yeah. We are the generation, we used those uh, dial phones. Yes. We went to pay phones. Mm-hmm. We went to Simuya Jami. Mm-hmm. We went to Nokia 3310. Mm-hmm. Then we came to the first touch screen, flip phones, Pole pole, now yes. can you pay iPhone? Now on your progression. Lakini we want to see to Nampatia iPhone 15. Unaona. So societies take time to progress. And this uh, commercial and political interest of the foreign countries, uh, really you have to be very careful how you navigate them. Because at the end of the day, it should be the interest of the people. William Ruto right now is entirely a slave of the IMF and the global powers from the West. He's a total slave. He himself admits, uh, yesterday he was saying, he's okay being called Zakayo. For as long as the IMF is happy, we are able to service our debt. But what about the people that elected you to the office? How about, you know, when he was uh, campaigning, he said he was going to form a government of 
uh, Mamambogas, Boda Bodas, and the others. He never mentioned the IMF. Those Mamambogas didn't know that the IMF was coming to become the biggest shareholder in William Ruto's government. And for as long as they are happy, everybody else can, can sort of. 